In Onshape, you can create flange walls in sheet metal that are attached to existing geometry. Here I am in a part studio. All I have is a sketch. In order to create a flange wall, first I'm going to need some other wall in my model. To do that, I will click on the icon to make this a sheet metal model or to create a sheet metal model. Here I have the dialog box and you can convert existing parts and surfaces or you could extrude a sketch or you can thicken a sketch. That's the method I'm going to use. I will select the face of the sketch that I already have. Here we have a thickness. I don't need to fill in any of the other information seeing as I'm just creating this initial flat wall. Let's hit the check mark. And now that I have this in the model, let's create our flange walls. You can do that from the icon right next to the previous one. And if you hover your mouse over it, you can see the preview. It prompts you that you need to select an edge or a side face as the base for each flange, then specify the base alignment and the distance. Let's click on the icon. And I'm going to start off by selecting an edge over here. And you can see a preview of the geometry. Let's select an edge over on the other side. And you can see the list of references. Here's where we have the flange alignment. And let me move the model a little bit so that the dialog box isn't covering it. And actually, before I do that, just to make things a little easier to read, let's change this to a bigger value for the length of the wall. Oh, perhaps that is too much. Let's go a little bit less. And for the flange alignment, right now it's set to inner. So the inner edge of the knee wall is lined with the inner edge of the one that it's attached to instead of inner you can go to outer and I want you to take a look at how the location of the wall shifts when I do that you'll notice that moves to the inside you could also choose middle where it's going to straddle the distance so again you can choose inner middle or outer and generally I prefer outer because it maintains the original length of the primary wall then we have for the end type of the wall right now we're using a blind depth that's why I typed in a numerical value and you can choose up to entity like selecting some kind of surface or edge or vertex or even using make connectors for driving the depth of the feature and you can see that there's a third option up to entity with an offset so you select a reference and then have a numerical offset from that reference but I don't have any other references in the model to use so let's keep it with the blind option and if I go to the bend angle drop down you can see that your other choices for defining the angle of the bend is to align to geometry or an angle from a certain direction Let's leave bend angle. Right now we have a value of 90 degrees. You can change the value. Here's 45, so it's a little flared out. Let's go back to 90 so that it is perpendicular. And we also have options here for automatic miter. In this particular situation, I don't have anything to miter automatically, but I will leave the option checked. And here we are using the model bend radius. If you uncheck the option, then you can enter a numerical value for the bend radius. And right now it's using a value of 10. Oh, let's just make it bigger so that's easier to see. Here we have a value of 20 in the model, quite huge. So that's good for the first flange. Let me hit the check mark. I'll create one other flange in the model. Once again, we will click on the icon. I'm going to select these inner edges and grab this one and this one as well and so you can see how we're creating sort of like the side wall and once again I'll leave the option for the flange alignment to inner we're going to do a blind depth and I'm using a depth of 25 and bend angle let's take a look at what happens if I uncheck the option for the automatic miter if I uncheck that You'll notice that here we have sort of like an angle, a taper to the walls at the top. Let's move this down a little bit and let's turn it back on. Automatic miter is what I want to use in this particular situation. I am happy with this second flange. Let's hit the check mark 
And there we have our two flanges in the model. Let's use the keyboard shortcut P to turn off the display of the planes. Let's then take our part and we can right click on it and choose assign material. And then from the list, I am going to look for, let's grab an aluminum. And I would just grab the generic aluminum in here and hit the check mark. And we can also go to this icon over on the right, which becomes available once you start putting in some sheet metal walls. You can display the sheet metal table and the flat view. And here we can see that we have five different bends listed in here. It gives us our bend radii and the angles and also lists two other joints here, joint E and F, which are of the type rip. Notice that we have a drop down list where you can change the type from rip to bend. I will leave it at rip, but that's additional information that you have available to you. Let's click on the panel to close it. So in that way, you can create flanges in your sheet metal model in a part studio. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.